Good morning, uh, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm here to announce an important decision regarding the United States policy towards Cuba. In 1996, Congress passed the Cuban Liberty and Democratic Solidarity Act, also known as Libertad. Uh, under Title III of that act, the United States citizens who had their property confiscated by the Castro regime were given the right to file suit against those who traffic in such properties. But those citizens' opportunities for justice have been put out of reach uh, for more than two decades. Now more than 22 years, every president Every Secretary of State has suspended Title III in the hope that doing so would put more pressure on the Cuban regime to transition to democracy. But just as we did in regard to moving our embassy to Jerusalem, the true capital of Israel, or designating the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps for what it is, a terrorist organization, the Trump administration recognizes reality. We see clearly that the regime's repression of its own people and its unrepentant exportation of tyranny in the region has only gotten worse because dictators perceive appeasement as weakness, not strength. President Obama's administration game of footsie with the Castro's junta did not deter the regime from continuing to harass and oppress the heroic ladies in white, a group of women dedicated to peacefully protesting the regime's human rights abuses. More broadly, the regime continues to deprive its own people of the fundamental freedoms of speech, press, assembly, and association. Indeed, according to NGO reports, Cuban thugs made more than 2,800 arbitrary arrests in 2018 alone. In the run-up to the country's recent sham constitutional referendum, one that enshrined the Communist Party as the only legal political party in Cuba, the regime harassed, beat, and detained leaders and activists, opposition leaders and activists. 310 people were arbitrarily detained, according to the Cuban Commission on Human Rights and National Reconciliation. Cuba's behavior in the Western Hemisphere undermines the security and stability of countries throughout the region, which directly threatens United States national security interests. The Cuban regime has for years exported its tactics of intimidation, repression, and violence. They've, they've exported this to Venezuela in direct support of the former Maduro regime. Cuban military intelligence and state security services today keep Maduro in power. Sadly, Cuba's most prominent export these days is not cigars or rum, it's oppression. Detente with the regime has failed. Cozing up to Cuban dictators will always be a black mark on this great nation's long record of defending human rights. For these reasons, I'm announcing that the Trump administration will no longer suspend Title III, effective May 2nd. The right thing to bring, the right to bring an action under Title III of the Libertad Act will be implemented in full. I have already informed Congress of my decision. Implementing my Title III in full means a chance of justice for Cuban Americans who have long sought relief for Fidel Castro and his lackeys seizing property without compensation. For the first time, claimants were able to bring lawsuits against persons trafficking in property that was confiscated by the Cuban regime. Any person or company doing business in Cuba should heed this announcement. In addition to being newly vulnerable to lawsuits, they could be abetting the Cuban regime's abuses of its own people. Those doing business in Cuba should fully investigate whether they are connected to property stolen in service of a failed communist experiment. I encourage our friends and allies alike to likewise follow our lead and stand with the Cuban people. As I said throughout my trip to South America this last week, the Trump administration is committed to helping grow the wave of democracy, good governments, and openness, which is steadily building throughout the entire Western Hemisphere. On my trip last week, I saw these positive changes firsthand and told our friends and allies that we're with them. We're on the side of what's right and what is just. Today, we are holding the Cuban government accountable for seizing American assets. We are helping those whom the regime has robbed get compensation for their rightful property. And we're advancing human rights and democracy on behalf of the Cuban people. Now we'll turn it over to uh, Western Hemisphere Assistant Secretary Kim Breyer to take some of your questions this morning. Thank you all.
I, I, you know, even before the announcement just now, the Canadians, the Europeans, and it's, uh, have come out against this and vowed to protect their uh, their companies, European Canadian companies that that could be uh, sued and, and with this decision. And I'm just wondering how much of a concern that is for the administration, and whether there will be any exemptions at all. As you know, it's not just Europe and, and, and Canada that have companies there. There's some significant Israeli investment in Cuba. So I, I'm just wondering, um, you know, how you, how you're going to respond to their unhappiness, to put it mildly. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Good morning, everybody. Um, I think the first thing to highlight is that obviously we've been in very deep and close contact with our allies in Europe and Canada and around the world as we consulted on this decision over the past several months as the Secretary had been shortening the, the period uh, of, uh, of suspension with his previous decisions. I think it's clear if you look in the macro sense, we are, have broad agreement with our allies in Europe and, and Canada and around the world on the policy objective, which is to promote democracy in Cuba and to free the Cuban people from the tyranny that they live under. We are in broad agreement on this. Where we sometimes disagree is on the best way to achieve that. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, you'll need to speak to the European Union and, and to our allies as to what response they will have. But I would like to emphasize that comp European companies that are operating in Cuba will have nothing to worry about if they are not operating on property that was stolen from Americans uh, post-revolution. Uh, so I think the vast number of, of uh, European companies will not have any concerns operating in Cuba. Um, how does, um, so how are you going to deal with the unhappy Europeans? They've, they've now threatened to um, take you to the WTO, um, uh, and so, so how are you going to deal with that? And to, and to what extent do you put Cuba, um, how does this in any way tie to cutting off any funds um, uh, to Maduro? Or how does this enhance the anti-Maduro campaign? Thanks for the question. First, I mean, I, I would defer you to the to the Europeans for for their response. They certainly, you know, we we took a decision today based on our laws uh, and our uh, sovereign concerns for the property of American citizens, and and the Europeans uh, will respond as as uh, as they see fit, and we'll continue to work closely with them on this policy and on the policy in in Venezuela. I think it's important to note that. The decision today is part of the trajectory that started with the, the Trump administration's NSPM-5, which was announced in June of 2017. The objective of that was, of course, to support the Cuban people and to deny resources to uh, the regime, and in particular to the security services uh, in Cuba. So this is part of a trajectory. We have since published the Cuba restricted list. We have since amended the restricted list. Uh, several times, and this is part of the trajectory of the administration trying to ensure that we support the people of Cuba and not the regime of Cuba. Uh, and going forward, uh, I would say the, the decision, uh, the Secretary's decision was about the actions of the Cuban regime. Certainly the actions of the Cuban regime in Venezuela are part of the context of, uh, of uh, the moment in which we are, in which we are living. And we are very clear, and I think our allies, and this is something very important, the Lima Group, which is a group of uh, 12 countries in the Western Hemisphere, for the very first time this week announced uh, its concern over Cuba's role uh, in uh, Caracas and, and made public its concern and called on the Cuban regime to support the transition in Caracas. So I think it's a very important moment in our relations in the hemisphere as well. Thank you. How much further is the administration um, considering going on its Cuba policy, uh, whether there's deliberations about uh, the terrorism list, or, um, I mean, is this a trajectory that you see continuing? I think that's a, it's a great question. I do put it in context of we've been over the past two years uh, building off of NSPM 5 and looking at the various tools that we have uh, to implement the, the President's vision for how we would conduct this policy. I think you're going to be seeing uh, quite a bit more from us and that this is the, the beginning of a, of, a, of a new process uh, on this that recognizes the reality on the ground in Cuba, which is in the past 20 plus years, the, the underlying reality in Cuba has not changed for the average Cuban. Terry, can you talk, uh, just to follow up on Matt's question on, on the issue of exemptions, are there any exemptions under the decision announced today uh, specifically with any U.S. company that is doing business in Cuba? There, there will not be any exemptions. Sure. How much property are you talking about in terms of uh, uh, 
value money and, and, and a number of properties. Yeah, flip two. So this is actually a, one of these questions where I can tell you what I know and then what I don't know is actually a, a larger. Um, what we understand, the Foreign Claims Settlement Commission uh, has, uh, it's an independent agency within the Department of Justice, has certified nearly 6,000 claims for property confiscated in Cuba with a total value of approximately $2 billion uh, with interest. We believe that value is somewhere uh, in the $8 billion range. Um, the, the most recent estimate we have from 1996, at the time that the law was enacted, that there could be up to 200,000 uncertified claims that were not certified by the Foreign Claims Settlement Commission, and that value could very easily be in the tens of billions of dollars. Uh, but it will, it will depend on, uh, of course, uh, whether, whether claimants decide to pursue uh, legal cases or not. What was the eight, the eight billion? The eight billion from, is with, with interest. So two billion of prop of the actual property or what it was at worth the time when it, it was, was taken, when it was confiscated, and then with interest that amounts to eight billion. So right. the total then would be eight billion. Eight billion of certified claims. And yes. then on the two hundred thousand uncertified claims, they haven't been rejected, right? They could still be certified. They could still be if the window were open. Be hundreds of billions. That could be. Sorry, Tens of billions, yes, sorry. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody.